Say it's already done. Oh, can I hear you, Lakewood? It's already done. Oh, it's already done. Christ did it for us. Welcome to the finished work program brought to you by Glory of Christ Ministries. Do you want exaltation? Do you want to be lifted? Do you want to be high? I'm telling you what you do. So listen to me good. God has called us in so many ways. Some are doctors. Others are lawyers. Others are businessmen. But we are all called. It's Jesus who gives the ministry. And the Holy Spirit gives the gift. And then God stamps all that. He stamps it all. After stamping it, exaltation. Amen. But James chapter 4 verse 1 to 2 says Because we do not pray, we do not ask, then we do not have and since we don't have we battle, we, we are afraid, we, know, we, we, we do all kinds of stuff. You know it is obvious once you don't have it. And yet someone else has it. Definitely there will be ill feelings in your heart. It is normal. It is human. Somehow there is that ill feeling that comes up. How come he has what I don't have and yet I need it too? And then as a result we develop fights and quarrels and hate one another but James says what causes fights and quarrels among you guys why are you not at peace with one another amen, amen. Why that is what James is saying. That's what James is saying. And James is saying, Do you know what? Agambomani. Actually, they come from your desires that battle within you. Because you want something, kubanga that... but you don't get it. Nene mutachifuna. You want it and, and, and you're trying with all your physical means and your ideas to have it. But at the end of the day, you don't get it, but someone else has it. Definitely, it will cause quarrels and fights. Then as a result, you kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. 
Mutani koku tingana no egomba, ninga tosobola kufuna via wetaga, ni mutani koku wana gana no kuyomba gana. Even then, you don't have it. Era still nembera ngate mubi funye. And the reason why you don't have it is because you've not asked. The reason we have not got it, the reason why we have not got it, is because we have not asked. Jesus says, ask anything. Let me tell you something, brothers. The fruit of prayer, let me put it this way. Prayerlessness does not only deprive us from what we want, but is also selfishness. Because of lack of prayer, we shall not be where we want to be. And if we are not where we want to be, we will never be of help to anyone else. Amen. A person who prays actually is a channel of God's blessing to the whole nation. Because the benefits of prayer will not only satisfy him, but it will also be an answer to so many people around him. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which is thrown in the ground. And it grows, it becomes a big tree where, I mean the big tree which becomes a shelter for men, for animals, for birds, for everything. Amen. Amen. It becomes a shelter. Amen. Also becomes a source of food. To the birds, to men, and to animals. Let me tell you, brothers, as you begin to pray, God wants to exalt you, wants to lift you up. And the more you are exalted, the more money you have. And the more wealthy you become, the more mouth to feed is the more you feed many. Let me wind up with what Job says in the book of Job chapter 22 and verse 27 to 20 to 30. Give me King James. Amen. Amen. Uh, Job outlines four things that come as a result of prayer. Job, you will he shows four things. Amen. Job, Job, Yubu, reveals or declares or outlines four things that come out of prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, let us pray. Let us get time to ask God. Read the word and pray. Whatsoever you are, I mean, whatsoever you desire, if it's in accordance to the God's will, you pray. Sometimes you may not know whether it's in God's will. You go ahead and ask for it. And John says in 1 John he says and this is how we know that it was in God's will if we get what we asked for. Amen. Amen. So in other words let me go ahead and ask there are things that I will know that are actually they are in the will of God and I will ask plainly but there are also things that I may not know whether they are in the will of God I won't shower from, from praying I will go ahead and pray 
Bia sija kumanyo bate bili mkwagala kwa katonda Ni hati sija bile kolo kwa bili mkwagala kwa katonda Wabula njia genda maso mbisabe In other words you ask Mungiri ndela kwe saba He knows what to give you at the right time Ama nye chokuwa mchisere chitufu Amen And he knows what to keep away from you Era ama nye ya vya buta kuku ya vya buta kuwa now Job says in John in Job chapter 22 and verse 27 to 30 Now ladies and gentlemen we are, we are going to read this scripture here and we will find out uh, four things that come out of prayer Job says Job agamba or maybe let me, the book of Job says thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows Ona sabanga okusaba ko eri ye na ye anakulira era ono sasulanga ebyo byewe yama You know in prayer when we are in hard moments Sometimes you find yourself making vows. I will serve you if only you do this, Lord. Blah, blah, blah. You know, you know, you say a lot of stuff. If you give me a child, Lord, I will give you. I will give back that child. And the Bible says here in the book of Job, it says, look here. When you pray, God will give it. And once you give it, make your vow very good. Amen. Amen. Then what else? So, number one, Job says, your answers will be hard and God will give it to you. Number two, thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. Amen. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. Number one, I mean the benefits of prayer, when you pray, God hears you and he gives it to you. Number two, you shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. You know, through through prayer there is such an anointing that comes on your life that not only you receive what you want but you shall be you know you shall see yourself as a child of God and you shall live in the spiritual arena spiritual, spiritual realm and through the prayer you shall have boldness to declare Amen. Amen Prayer first of all brings your uh, Amen Prayer brings what you ask for into your life Secondly It brings boldness to declare a thing it gives birth to certain boldness in your inner self. Prayer brings faith in you. Let me say, it releases a certain anointing that, you know, which kind of releases faith in you. Amen. Amen. For example, when John and Peter were going to the temple, the Bible says these were prayerful guys. And on that day, they were also going back into prayer. They were going to the temple courts for prayer. But because, you know, their life is all, it's a life of prayer. They found a man seated who was asking for alms. He wanted money to leave. 
So they met they found this man seated on the beautiful gate. Bus. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Basa go msajono nga tunde ku lujolulunji. And the man looked at them intently and he was asking. That's what I was saying. That's what, that, that, that's what I told you. That prayer does not only affect you, but affects people around you. Number one, it brings the desire of your heart to you. Number two, it brings a certain boldness towards God's faithfulness to anyone who, who comes in contact to you. And the man looked at, I mean, Peter and John looked at the, at the crippled man. And he said, I mean, they said, silver which you are actually asking from, from us we don't have even gold money we don't have but you know what we are full of the Holy Spirit we know that God is able to do exceedingly above what we can ask we feel it in our hearts that God has exalted Jesus and nothing is impossible we can feel him we can hear him so therefore we know what you want but what, we, what you want we don't have but what we have we give thee we have come to know Christ to we are children of Christ we are together with Christ and Christ is in our hearts we are men of prayer we have seen what prayer does therefore what we have we give you in the name of Jesus I declare now rise up and walk hallelujah, hallelujah. you shall declare you shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass Job says not only prayer will bring what you want but bring a certain boldness and that boldness will cause you to declare a thing and a thing shall happen come on give God a mighty hand clap yes. that is the power of prayer a person who prays is bold to declare something of the thing he's going to have but he possess it now because of faith come on give God a my hand clap Thank you for watching the finished work. I hope you enjoyed and it was lovely. Glory be to God. And right now we are coming into the segment of Ask Pastor Herbert. Uh, we have some uh, several questions here. Down on my paper, I put them down. These are some of the questions you guys have been questioning. Uh, the first question comes from Sharon Taylor. Just got married, but my husband wants me to transfer and start fellowshipping from their church I don't want though how should you how should I handle that well I don't know how uh, you have counseled uh, Sharon Taylor did you go through counseling but anyway whatever the case I think this is something that you can that you can settle between two of you, you sit down and and understand each other because when we get married 
everybody is willing to let go of him or herself for someone else. It depends why you don't want to go there. Maybe you are a minister and your husband is not a minister. This is something to sit down and, and, work, and, and work on it between you two. Try to tell your husband, look, I have a ministry. Please let me stay this way. But also when we go to the word of God, let's see what the word of God says. In Genesis chapter 2. Now, I don't know whether you're watching with your husband, but Genesis chapter 2. There's something beautiful here from verse 23. It reads, Then the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why, now I love the way the Holy Spirit puts it here, verse 24 says, That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Well, husband, consider leaving your father's house. This time maybe it could be your church and help to settle, I um, mean, go where Sharon feels comfortable and also where Sharon can serve the Lord from. Thank you for sending in your questions and I hope I answered them correctly. And right now you can be asking yourself, how can I send my questions to Pastor Herbert? Simple, go to our Facebook uh, page, Pastor Herbert Tronka, and send it, write on it, your question. Uh, any question, don't be ashamed, any question. The Bible has the power to answer any question. I hope you have enjoyed. Let's meet next time and God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I know you've been greatly blessed by the message that has been preached to you. But you know what? If you are there and right now you, you, you believe with all your heart that you need to make right your life with Jesus Christ. You want to invite him to be the Lord of your life and the King of your life. You can do so right now. Because I want to tell you the truth that no one will see the Father except through Jesus. No one will be saved unless he receives Jesus and is born again. The question is, how can you be born again? Paul writes to the Romans in the book of Romans chapter 10 from verse 9. He says, if you will confess if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, He is your Lord, and believe it in your heart that He died for your sins and rose again, you'll be saved. You'll be saved from hell, saved from your sins, saved from demonic powers and oppressions. You'll be saved. You'll have crossed from darkness to life. Amen. It takes willingness. Right now, if you want to receive Jesus, which I believe so, I, I don't think you have a choice. But truly, truly, if you believe that you need Jesus, you repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died on the cross for me. And I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord and the King of my life. Lord, I surrender my life to you. Help me to understand you in any way you want me to know. Thank you, Jesus, because I invite you right now into my life. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I commit this gentleman, I commit this lady, this young man and this young woman who have trusted in you, who have confessed to you that you are the Lord of their lives. Lord, I ask for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please come to them. Come to that lady, come to that young man, come to that man, come to that person. Wherever they are, Lord, touch their lives, touch their health, touch their feelings, touch their emotions. Let them, uh, let them feel your presence because I know you are ever present. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you, conf if you confess that prayer, if you pray that prayer with me and you confess Jesus as your Lord, I want to tell you the truth. You have crossed from death to eternal life. Now you belong to Christ. Please look for a good church around you. How will you know a good church? A good church exalts Christ, not a person. A good church exalts the word of God, not what God has done. Exalts the word. Exalts Christ. Exalts the Bible. Teaches the Bible. Emphasizes the Bible. Talks about Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. A good church welcomes the Holy Spirit. And they always, their emphasis is to make you a disciple of Christ, not a disciple of the church, not a disciple of the pastor. So therefore, I will commit you into the hands of Jesus, who is able to transform your life. So look for a, uh, a good church that exalts Christ, that teaches the word of God, and that embraces the, the, the Holy Spirit. God bless you. But also, in case you are around here, in case you are around in this area, and you feel you can come over, Glory of Christ Church welcomes you. We are started in Kasubi on Kawara Road. You can't miss it. Just right there. You can ask anyone, maybe if you arrive in Kasubi Market, ask anybody. They will bring you at Glory of Christ Church. But also you can use any information available on your screen. You can contact us on those contacts on your screen. And we shall be happy to give you the directions. God bless you. Abolu ganda mukama yeba zwe amanya gange wampi to musumba kavuma Robert okuva ku Glory of Christ Church njagala okubeba za mungere njawulo mwe bale kutwagala era tubenyumiriza mu nyo era yensonga rwachi tuchali ku mpewo olokuba mwe mutu wagira muberawo nakasera ke mutu wa nga finish work ere ku mpewo abolu gando yizo kuba oliyeyo nga waliwo message obobo bako bwa kunyumira no gamba nsobola bufuna antya Amazimo bako obo soboro bufuna okuva ku kanisa ya Glory of Christ Church esangiwa kasubi kawala kurugudo lugende kawala ne same post ennene obulunje ko Glory of Christ Church aboluga nechirala oyizo kuba ku simu ezili ku screen yeyo obako obujja kuba bukutuka ko bulunje nyo mwe bale tuwagira era tubenyumiriza mu nyo Thank you for tuning in to the Finished Work Program. Feel free to join us every Sunday at Glory of Christ Church, located in Kasubi, Kawala. Come, let's worship together, praise together, enjoy His presence together, and hear more of this life-changing word every day, every hour, every night. For more information, please contact the numbers on your screen and contact our social media. We look forward to hear from you. And don't forget to tune in next time, same time, same day. This program was proudly brought to you by friends and partners of The Finished Work.